And welcome into the Kings Warriors pregame show. I am Rhino in Sacktown. That is Damon Bruce here with you. Damon, welcome to the show. How the heck is everything going? Ryan, I had a great time when I popped on your show earlier in the year. I'm glad that we can go ahead and do a uh, co-channel broadcast right now. Yes. I mean, we we definitely have interested parties tonight. I know how the Warriors got here. I hope you can educate me on how it is the Kings got into this game. And yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple of excited and angry fan bases all at the same time, right? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, right? And for Kings fans looking at this one, it's bittersweet. So they're like, well, could we win two? And then you got to rebalance them and say, well, can we win one? And then it's like, oh, could we take the Warriors out? Is that okay? Not make it? You get that whole dynamic. So there's a lot going into it. But first, you know, last time we talked, we you said the Kings would be in the playoffs longer than the Warriors. I want to get to that in a second, but I was on your channel a week ago and I was pleasantly surprised by what I saw, Damon. Some WrestleMania chat? You got WrestleMania going on your channel? Fill me in. Okay, so what happened was my wife is like a real housewives of anywhere addict, okay? So, okay. so we have Peacock. And also, there's a couple Indiana basketball games on Peacock, so I would have had it anyway. But because we had Peacock, I just happened to have WrestleMania. I hadn't watched WrestleMania in years, <laughs> so I watched a little bit on, what was it? It started on Saturday night. Saturday. And all of a sudden, within 15, 20 minutes, my four-year-old and my two-and-a-half-year-old were fighting each other. Like, it, it oh, wow. kids had to go bonkers. Like, they, they loved it. It was a huge sensory overload for them. And I, I, I was the first time I'd seen wrestling in a really long time. So come back on Sunday night, I'm like, I'm going to watch that main event. Hell, yeah. <laughs> And I did. And it was better than I thought it was going to be. It made me smile more than I thought it was going to smile. I hadn't done a <laughs> night of wrestling in, I don't know, like 15, 16, 17, 18 years. It's been a long time since I, I had any attention at all uh, paid to wrestling. And I just I, th I thought it was great. <laughs> well, brother you picked a good show to come back you picked a really good show <laughs> uh but yeah we've got some wrestling fans that kind of tune in here once in a while and then the other thing i got set up you always do it's it's your drink of the show what is it called damon sip of the day we do a sip, sip of the, the day yeah we actually i have a leftover cup of coffee right here which okay. will which will function as the sip of the day on this show great so i have an overpriced bubbly water right here premium just because damon bruce is joining us here on if you don't like that for the king's warriors pregame show and on damon bruce's channel the damon bruce show so damon let's get to it i look at these two teams and i don't know what their identities are so if you are golden state what's your scout for sacramento tonight i mean the identities are inconsistencies right i mean that's both of the teams share that the, the team you get one week is not the team you see the next week. And it's been like that for, you know, 82 games for the yeah. most part. Um, it, it Look, to me, just the scouting report for this game as the Warriors are looking at it is simple. Let's hit more threes against a team that certainly isn't going to beat us without hitting more threes than us. You know, so I, I think the Warriors 
have to hit their shots. When the Warriors hit their shots, they turn into a dangerous basketball team. The fact Malik Monk isn't playing in this game is a big, big, big demerit to the chances of the Sacramento Kings walking away a winner. I mean, there are a lot of things working in that regard, right? There's an awful lot of history here. There's the, you know, DNA knowledge of a four-time champion that the Warriors have ingrained into them. There is the cultural Sacramento never's won a big game in like the history of its franchises element going on, including a game seven against these very Golden State Warriors. You know, it's like it's like we we're back at last year. We just go straight to game seven. And we all saw Steph Curry drop 50 at the Golden One Center in the mm-hmm. winner go home game. And that's the sort of DNA that needs to take over for the Warriors. Now, again, Malik Monk isn't playing. Herter is not out there. Gary Payton's not playing. That's a trade that I would make just from a who's playing tonight standpoint any night of the week. Yep. The Warriors get rebounds. If Wiggins stays in front of De'Aaron Fox or Pajemski or Chris Paul, however they go about that, because Gary Payton's not playing. There's your scouting report right there. Everybody do your damn job, you know, well, all at the same time in one basketball game. What a concept. Go, yeah. Don't throw the ball away trying to make, you know, some highlight level pass. Get a little bit more fundamental. Take care of your business. Hit your threes. Beat the Kings. And then what? You're going to have to go on to another game and win that one, too. It's like all Tough. of a it's like the NCAA tournament for the NBA. It really is. It is. And I mean, the NBA lucked out here. I mean, I don't think they figured in that the 65 game rule would affect so many players because more stars played this year. I think that is why partially wins are up. 46 wins would not have got you the third seed last year in most regular season. So it's debatable if the Kings took a step back, took a sidestep. We'll see. But the Malik Monk thing's kind of funny to me because we know they're a better team with them. You've laid out all the reasons. But when you look at the four meetings between these teams, Malik's only averaging 12.4 points a game. And I know that's a decent amount coming off of a Sacramento bench that doesn't give you much. The Warriors haven't seen this version of the Kings, and we don't even know really how to define this version because defensively and physicality-wise, it changes night to night. Let's see what Keon Ellis does, right? Yeah. Is there is there any scenario in your mind that the Kings win this game without everybody walking out of Golden One Center talking about the game that Keon Ellis just had? Like, he has to have a big game tonight. He has oh, to have 100%. one of those six-steal gaffling Steph or clay all night long, closing out on shooters kind of basketball game that makes everyone sort of reevaluate who he is and how costly that Malik Monk injury really is. Um, Keon Ellis is a good player. And tonight it's, you know, it's the essentially it's the first knock on the door of the playoffs. We're going to see this year. I know they don't call them playoff games, but if you can lose it and your season is over, that's a playoff game. <laughs> no <laughs> it doubt. Really is. Yeah. So uh, let's see what Keon Ellis does. And one of the biggest basketball games he's played in in a real long time, right? I think that the, the Kings are not winning this game without him being felt in this game. Yeah, I think if you have to know, for my for my taste, if the Kings win this game, you have to know Keon was on the court. That doesn't necessarily have to show up in the scoring column. Now, he does need to hit open shots when he gets them right. but he more deep- pest just a pest everywhere yes, exactly right the combination what mike brown in my opinion did not do well in game seven last year was make in-game adjustments he goes with terrence davis over davion mitchell and i don't want to go back to last year but what i'm saying is he has to be quicker to adjust in this game if the warriors go on a run if curry's getting hot you got to throw those different looks with the different guards because the kings are able to switch now on the perimeter now can they do that with steph curry That's a different situation, but Keon is absolutely key to what they do. And also, really, to me, what's key to what Sacramento is going to do, and I'll let you speak to the Warriors, is the officials. I think they're going to have as big of a part in this game tonight as anybody else, because what kind of game is it going to be, Damon? The more physical the game, the more it favors the Kings, right? Not necessarily. I mean, you would think that going on paper, but then usually Looney comes in and maybe gets 11 rebounds. You know, they get pushed around when they shouldn't. Well, let, let's see what happens because yeah. Looney, you know, who, who was pulling down rebounds at times, like his name was Wilt Chamberlain in the seven game series that they played last year. 
is in a much different role right now coming off the bench. What does Trace Jackson Davis look like early? You want a good place to put your eyes in the first five minutes of the game? What's Trace Jackson Davis doing against Sabonis, battling in the front court? Great point. Does Draymond handle that without any help or vice versa, I guess I should say? Uh, That is where... I, I think an awful lot of the barometer of this game not only gets determined from just the banging around inside, but like you just said, Rhino, what what are the officials going to do the first time there's a little body contact on the shot? Is it going to be a soft whistle, a quick one? You know, what are we going to see when bodies start banging from a whistle standpoint? Yeah. Um, the Warriors have just starred in a, you know, I think passed around by a lot of NBA online fans meme in the look at how many free throws the Lakers get to shoot. Look at how few free throws the Warriors get to shoot. It's the biggest disparity, I think, then, in the NBA. And then the Kings. <laughs> Below yeah, yeah, them. Yeah. So, and, and then if you get to the, yeah, you actually get to the line, what do you do when you get there? Great so point. A team that has some Hall of Fame caliber shooters on it, the Warriors aren't as good at the free throw line as I think they would be. Andrew Wiggins is always an adventure. You see what you get out of Draymond, who, again, feels like he should and does draw the most contact, but then he might not take more than four shots. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that go into stats that as you look at them and point at them with certain teams, it feels like you can make your accusations. There's so many different weird moving components to how the Warriors not only shook out as a team, but statistically as well this year. They've just, again... It's at the epicenter of the frustration because there are nights when you look at the Warriors and you said to yourself, none of this fits. What are they doing? Why are why aren't why aren't they doing something else? Why didn't they position themselves an offseason ago into something else? And then there are other nights where it's come together to the point where you think, do you think that they could win a first round series if they were actually the eight? You know, like, I mean, yeah, no, it's, totally. It's been weird. It's been a really weird year. It has been a weird year, and you hit on Trace Jackson Davis. I want to talk about him for a second because that matchup was Sabonis. We've seen the Warriors play off of Sabonis many times, and that's kind of been the the hitch in Sabonis' giddy-up. It's not so much the decision he makes. It's the time it takes to make the decision. So do you expect with Trace being a little bit smaller that the Warriors are going to hang off Sabonis, or do you think he's going to try to bang with them a little bit? If I'm Sabonis, I'm going inside with shoulders no, and elbows. Yeah, you have That's to. What I'm doing. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there are other guys on the Kings who are going to take your mid range and your your eight to ten footers. And if Sabonis wants to go ahead and live there, I saw the Warriors beat them in a seven game series when he tried to do that before. I think he learned from that, right? I, I think he's going to get more aggressive. I also think that Draymond brings out the aggression in players just because uh, look, if I'm the Kings, the best way to win this game is get Draymond ejected, right? I mean, I'd be looking to nudge Draymond everywhere around the court, get under his skin, extra elbows, extra shots to the thigh or whatever, you know, just whatever you can do to get into him, you get into him tonight. And I don't know how you do that. You know, if you're sagging off and playing away from the rim. So I do think it's going to get physical. And if I'm Sabonis, if I'm Sabonis, I want to bang. That's Oh, no doubt. Yeah. That's his. I mean, for him, that is like a kid in the candy store if he's got a guy that's a little bit smaller than him because he doesn't see that too often. Um, but for those that may be watching this right now that aren't Kings fans or maybe haven't watched a lot of Warriors basketball, I say Jonathan Kaminga's development, you say, it's a crying shame that he's ineligible for most improved player in the NBA. I don't know if he would have won it, but he should be in the conversation. Um, he's ineligible due to the way that the NBA tracks minutes. I saw that a little bit earlier today online. Um, he's been fantastic. He's been the Warriors' second best player this year, Rhino. He, he's no been the second most consistent player, even though – The year for him was also battling inconsistencies in playing time, in are you starting, are you coming off the bench, are you going back to the bench when Draymond off of his suspension, can you and Trace Jackson Davis coexist out there in a front court? So it's been a a figuring out how all the pieces fit together year, but Kaminga just as the individual, huge step forward, big, big step forward, and if he takes that next step forward this off season. I mean, he could be flirting with all-star potential next year. I believe that. 
Yeah, there's no doubt. I think there's a couple teams in Camingo. The Warriors are one of them with developing young talent, whether it be in their system there or down with their G League teams. I've seen a lot more of that. I've covered the Stockton Kings really closely this year. And that's the story of Keon Ellis developing down there, identifying talent. So I think with the new CBA going into effect, Damon, next year, that is going to be a huge component for teams that may fall into those thresholds that are going to have severe penalties. Yeah, I mean, watching luxury tax and the money spent on a roster is something that the Warriors have to pay extra attention to with some of the money that is spent on their roster. They're very lucky that they have two rookies coming from draft positions that normally bear like zero NBA fruit. Brandon Pajemski yeah. and Trace Jackson Davis, I think each guy in my, you know, I don't, I'm not here to tell you what, Either of those players could become, but both players are going to have 12 year long NBA careers, which is more than we've been able to say about a lot of rookies that the Warriors, you know, have drafted and tried to develop or drafted and traded away. And it just didn't fit for whatever reason. You got two NBA entities out of the 19th and what, 58th pick in the draft. That's yep. really something else for the Warriors. And they're very lucky that they did that because the price of poker goes up an awful lot just the way the league works and Steph's contract works. Yeah, speaking of contracts, if the Warriors lose tonight, is this the last time we're going to see Clay in a Dubs uniform? It's a great question, and I think the answer is sadly yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's just an NBA reality. Joe Lacob can want to keep it together all that he wants. I just think that there are enough data points, enough cap issue, and enough naked eye test for the Warriors to really think about moving on from Clay really for the first time when this ends. What could change that? Well, you beat the Kings, you beat whoever the Warriors, uh, the Lakers and Pelicans winner is. Now all of a sudden you're in the eighth seed. What do you got? The Thunder? Thunder the one seed? Thunder, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. All of a sudden, the young kids get upset. Now, all of a sudden, you're playing poker in the second round, and Clay just had one of those games that make you go, God damn. <laughs> Without that, it's probably not happening. Does this Warrior team believe, Damon? Just the inside beat. Like, how are they walking into this game? I think they believe they can beat Sacramento, but do they think they can do anything past that? They absolutely believe, a hundred percent believe that they can that they can win this game. Do they believe that they're about to hang a banner and be champions? I mean, they're they're kind of sniffing their own farts if they really believe that. I think sure. that there there has been enough. There's been enough tribulation in the entire year for them to understand where they are in the pecking order of contention right now. You know, to, to be champions, you have to know what it takes to be a champion. And I don't think the Warriors are looking around and saying, we have exactly what it takes to be champions. There is, there's a, a you know, a remnants, there's an ember of a champion in there, but will there be a fire burning them towards the NBA finals? I, I just don't think so. And, and there's no shame in that. There really isn't. No, now, there's not. In this offseason, if they tried to run it all back, no matter what happens tonight, there would be shame in that. That's why Absolutely. I think Clay has to go because it's just time for something different because this experiment has run its course. And by the way, the experiment was grand. It was beautiful. It hung four banners. It took the Warriors from being on the same level of the Sacramento Kings and separating them to the point where they're now the most valuable franchise in the NBA. Who would have ever thought the Warriors could exist, not just, you know, as a star in the NBA universe, but an entire constellation to themselves? No one ever thought that this was available even in their wildest dreams for the Warriors, but they can't. Again, it's been 10 years of unbelievably satisfying basketball. And, you know, that that's that's normally five more years than any really satisfying basketball team gets. <laughs> no doubt. And I'm impressed with how they've done it. For the most part, other than KD, they've done it organically. They've drafted well. They, they just draft well historically. And they've made some good decisions uh, in the front office. And the Kings, you know, they're going to have a big offseason coming up. For those that don't know, they ran it back this year. They said, we think that we can get a little bit better. Let's not go all in quite yet. And kind of like the uh, Warriors, the Kings fans and the Kings, this is going to be an offseason of change regardless. And, and by the way, let me apologize. I've seen the comment here uh, that there's a little buzzing. That is definitely coming from my end. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, it was a problem 
a, a day ago with Larry out of nowhere when we were doing a show together, and I'm sorry that I brought my my headphone or microphone buzz to your channel. Pardon me. Hey, 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 my brother, you can bring your buzz any single time. <laughs> I will deal with the buzz to have you one on one on with the Kings late or Kings Warriors pregame show. It is good stuff. But um. No, just getting back to the Kings, it's going to be a different offseason. And I think for us, I think I would say optimism's high from this point. Pressure is off, Damon. If Malik Monk was here, if we didn't deal with the injuries and we're rolling into a 9-10 game against the Warriors, our stomachs are in our pits. Or our stomachs are just dropping. But I think now they know their rotation, which has been different all year for the Kings because Mike Brown had played different guys. He had messed with it. Now Davion minutes or Davion Mitchell, who's going to be essential to what the Kings do tonight, he knows he's getting 15, 20, 30 minutes. So I feel like the group that's going into this is ready to rock it. And normally, guys, if they are going to come off the bench that aren't in the rotation, they're usually ready to go and play well. How'd the Kings get here, Ryan? Explain to me why in the last 10 games, in every big game that came up on their schedule, sure. they fit the bit. How did that happen? Sure. The Kings have a propensity as the game comes down to the stretch, Damon, that they tighten up. It's like all of a sudden the basketball IQ that they've grown over the past 24 months just floats away. And 20 seconds on the shot clock, you're hucking three-pointers up, making stupid passes. Uh, Mike Brown came out yesterday and said, and Damon, I've not heard a head coach say this in a while, especially going into the playoffs. Well, I'm going to have to be okay with it if we shoot 30, 40, uh, 50 threes. But, uh, and it's just, to me, I, I think Sacramento, and he also referenced the lack of set plays. He said, I've let the guys run the plays. So that has been the inconsistency for the Kings. And then obviously too much reliance on the three ball, but, I'm not going to sit here and deny what everybody is also saying or some people will say in the chat. They've been in the two-minute report three times in six games, Damon. Yeah, it's, uh, there's an 82-game season. You guys stepped on your dicks more than just three times. You know what I mean? Like, no, we did. But No, we absolutely did. But I'm saying the end of the season, That right. if you want me to lay out how we got here. Our, our yeah, just the last stuff. 10 games, I'll, I'll give you that. Bad calls can hurt close games. I, sure. I, I acknowledge that. Something, um, something's it, been com – oh, go ahead, dude. No, is it, so is it a point guard? Pro, is it De'Aaron Fox? Uh, and this is why he doesn't get that all-star invite because he doesn't make the right decision at the end of the game. Or is it a lack of coaching, as you were suggesting, or not having a, a, enough plays to run? That doesn't even sound possible at the NBA level. Uh, just letting guys freelance to their heart's desire, no matter how many threes we take, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Like, is Mike Brown safe this offseason? I think he should be 100%. And I think that's where the um, ambiguity comes in. I think there's been a lack of reporting on what's gone on in that Kings building. And to directly answer your question, there has been some type of disconnect with, in my opinion, De'Aaron Fox and the coaching staff. De'Aaron's been playing a ton off the ball this season, and he got to the NBA with the ball in his hand. When he didn't have his ball or the ball in the hand, when Tyrese Halliburton was here, what happens, Damon? Tyrese gets traded. And so now Damon's back or Damon Fox is back to off ball. So there's been some more off the court distractions and just no, uh, no blueprint, no firm identity of we're going to be a physical team. We're going to be a defensive team. We're going to be an offensive team. It's always landed somewhere in between there. So the big question in the off season and the problem of this season is, who are what kind of team do the Sacramento Kings want to be? And do they have the personnel to correctly do that? And that's going to answer is it a Mike Brown problem or a personnel problem? And you know, it's really odd, even though they've taken wildly different paths to this game, and we're going, you know, back a decade to talk about the wildly different paths the Warriors have taken to this game. Sure. They're oddly in that weird place where you're just on the edge of not being good enough, but you're back away far, in, far, far enough from the edge of, oh my gosh, you guys suck at this. So you don't get into the lottery, yet you're not really a contender. And now you're this, you know, 44, 43 win, just kind of stuck their team with no real easy lever to pull to improve. 
You know, the Warriors were allowed to go back into the casino at the height of their contention and yes. pull a lever that would have allowed them to stay the course of truly contending if they hit the number two pick in the overall draft that was James Wiseman, who obviously was anything but a hit. And because of that lever pull and, a, and, and many other things, but that was like a major fork in the road moment. And now the Warriors are stuck in this interesting young core, but aging group that the coach trusts so infinitely. It might even be at the behest of, of the young core. Um, and there's like a tug of war. Are, 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 are we now getting old? Are we young? Are we, what are we? What, you know, we, we might've been a lot more defensive minded, but unfortunately the captain of our defense gets suspended for 28% of the season yep. or, or whatever. It was a mandatory, you know, therapist couch session. I don't, I don't, he was gone a long time. Draymond Green's absence this year went into as much of the James Wiseman didn't work out to explain to how the hell it is they're in this game this evening because I think that Draymond missed so much time that had he not missed any of that time, you find the margin of difference to get the Warriors out of this game, certainly into the 8-9 game, if not to the 6 seed. So it's really weird. You've got young guys who you want to empower to be the early you know, the, 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 the next guys, like it's about to be your team fellas. Yet you have Draymond's overbearing personality at all times. Steph's overbearing, you know, one line on that excellent NBA players throughout the history of the league that mm -hmm. you can never turn away from. And the warriors just don't. And I don't necessarily think they should. I don't think they got the stones to trade Steph Curry. But if you're, if you wanted to talk about how could you actually relaunch knowing that it would take a year or two for things to work out. You'd still need decisions to absolutely line up. But how could the Warriors relaunch contention instantly? Well, it's the same way that they could basically eradicate themselves from contention all at once. Because yeah. without the without Steph Curry, the Golden State Warriors have nothing. Zero offensive identity without Steph Curry. He is the everything to this team as any one singular player is to their roster. Um, what... If they traded him, that would be the end of this, obviously, and they don't have the guts to do it, but that's the only mega return that I think anyone could fetch for the Warriors because I don't want him trading Kaminga. I don't want him trading Trace Jackson Davis because these are the young guys that you got to get better with as you reset. 100%. Yeah, so. you, you got to build around them, and I guess the question becomes how long is Steph willing to wait? Let's say Kaminga continues to progress. The Warriors can improve smallly in different areas. Maybe that changes, but do the Warriors owe Steph anything if they do get to that spot to let you know, Steph I mean, make it, that decision? Yeah, and look, they got an owner that absolutely will give it his best shot. For whatever the Warriors don't do, it won't because it was a dollar amount Joe Lacob was unwilling to spend. I think we've learned that. Okay. Um, and, you know, the whole, like, what do the Warriors owe Steph Curry or vice versa? You know, what, what are you going to do about that? Dude, it's the last few years of his career. Like, the prime is not just in the rearview mirror. It's fucking way back there. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to say the prime's way back there, Damon. I thought he had one of the better years he's had in a really long time with a depleted team. That's the same thing. Like, it, there's still that. That's how good he is. That's yeah. why you can't say no or goodbye or evaluate him as, we got to say goodbye a year too early rather than a year too late. You know, it's one of the, you, you, he is their everything still, and he's the greatest shooter in the world and he's never been this jump out of the gym athlete. Like I think Steph has actually got a game that is built to age. Like at some point he's just going to be the old man hitting corner threes. Yeah. But he could probably do that till he was 56 years old. <laughs> you know, I mean like, like longer than that probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, it's just that they're, you know, what do the Warriors owe Steph Curry? What did they, you know, what the, what, are, what do they do? Dude, they got four championships already with him. Like, do you know how, that's awesome. Like the Warriors and the Steph Curry have done more winning together than most star players and franchises will ever even fantasize about. So to ask for just, it goes to infinity. There's always going to be another chance at the end of his career that they're going to be champions. I just, I, I don't know how realistic that is. It feels like the whole thing 
so here, I guess here's my, my other point, right? What's better for the Warriors tonight? You beat the Kings, and then you turn around, and you play the Lakers or the Pelicans, and you win that game too, and now you are the eighth seed, and you're back in it, and there's all this, you know, whether it be real or false data that you're still in it, and they come back and keep it all together, or this whole thing falls flat on its damn face tonight, and it's the reality check that Mike Dunleavy, Joe Lacob, Steve Kerr all sort of needed going into an offseason of big change. What's better for the start of next year? A token playoff appearance run, however it goes, or an offseason of different thinking and radical change? I don't know what's better for them going forward. Actually, well, the, I do think I know what's better for them going forward, and it's not winning tonight. It's so really you weird. So you hopped on me about it being an 82-game schedule. I mean, with all due respect, hasn't this season already been that for the Warriors, regardless of what happens tonight, tomorrow, or maybe in a seven-game series later? Right, but again, we was scratched 20 games of Draymond Green plus, right? And but like that's that. the problem, right? Doesn't that just mean dramatic change there in its own? But what the hell are they without Draymond Green? Like, when I talk about dramatic change, it's not Draymond leaving. The Warriors still play their best basketball when Draymond's in war daddy mode. There's no doubt. Like, you want to talk about what could end all winning? Draymond Draymond leaving the picture wow. affects the Warriors' chances to win much more than Klay Thompson stepping out of the picture, in my mind. It really does. So... When I talk about radical offseason change, I'm not discussing or thinking about Draymond is out. I'm not. He's going to be around a while. And as we've learned, there's going there's going to be nights where Draymond puts an awful lot at the tape on the table. There's going to be other nights where he tries to do that magic trick where he pulls the tablecloth out from everything and everything falls off the table. Like he's going to yeah, swipe that, that. it all off. Um, so it's again, they're, they're, they're at the, you know, this was the brightest star there was is now a, a diminishing star. It's about to, that's just the way it goes. That's, that's sports. Father time is knocking on the warrior's door. It, it, it's the way it goes. It just seems like Dr Draymond makes Steph's life harder. <laughs> than it, it, it seems like it would be just as hard without him as it is with him. Rhino on nights he's suspended. He certainly makes life harder for all the Golden State Warriors yeah. on nights where you're going to war with that dude and his is the wallet that says bad motherfucker on it you got a real True. chance to win that game it, it, there's I'm, something to it the Kings don't have one of those guys Damon no they don't no they don't by the way you like what could be the difference between the Kings and you know where they could have been or where they are is a deal with the devil that gets you a player like Draymond Green, who one night you're saying, we can't tolerate any more of this. And on the next night you're saying, holy shit, he, you know, even though his box score is not that impressive, his fingerprints are all, all, are all over this win tonight. And that's yeah. who Draymond has always been. Yeah, he, he somehow he ends up sneaking up for three or four threes against the Kings every game. Dr or it is Damon, it's you. It, but dude, and I'll tell you, if he hits three against you, you're basically toast. Done. That's done. a magic number for the Warriors. Draymond is it really? hits three okay. threes in a game. I don't have it in front of me, and I don't want to make it up on the spot because the chat room will jump all over me with the right number, I'm sure. But, like, Draymond hits three threes. Oh, the Warriors win an awful lot of those basketball games. All right. So I, I kind of want to learn a little bit more about those landmarks because the Kings have some of those stats too. But Damon Bruce joining us here on If You Don't Like at, and the Damon Bruce Show. Uh, I know you have a certain name for your community. You've built up a hell of a community, by the way, Damon. Tell them about it. Thanks. It's it's just been awesome. And, you know, I, I, I invite any one of your regular listeners, Ryan, who is a big 49ers fan, because I think we do a great job covering the 49ers, yes. hopefully, on the channel. And I hope they would think that, too. Please like, subscribe. It would mean an awful lot. Um, you know, I... I love Bay Area sports. I think I've, you know, in 18 years done a pretty good job covering it. I continue to do that. But now over here on YouTube, you know, the, the YouTube is not some local radio station. It goes a lot further yeah. than that. So I'm branching out into even more stuff and I'm looking forward to it. It's year number two, just started year number two over here right. on uh, uh, on the plus, as we call it. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's uh, Damon Bruce plus. Plus and Bruce had a baby and birthed the word plus and uh, my my audience makes makes up 
weird sayings around the show, and that's one of them. So here we are. I love it. It's gone very well, and and I thank everyone who's been a part of it. I, I get it, Damon. I come from a pedigree of Jim Rome and Grant Napier, so uh, a lot of different fans <laughs> that like to do different things, but it's a pleasure having all of you here. If you want to check out my work, that's the King's Court. It's a daily podcast, King's Insider, and it's free. Go check that out. We get you ready for the game. We get you ready for whatever is coming up that day with the Sacramento Kings on Apple and Spotify. All right. So and, look, if I can say you yeah. do a hell of a job of what you do, Grant Napier is just a good guy through and through. Amen. Uh, I don't even think he understands the role that he he's played in, in my career. Uh, one of the biggest breaks and opportunities that helped raise the profile of my career was a fill in gig for Jim Rome. I think I filled in on the Jim Rome show like 12, 15 times or something like that. Um, yep. And the first opportunity I got was because Grant put in a recommendation for me. And I know that he was the one that did it. And I will forever be indebted to Grant Napier for, you know, putting me on Jim Rome's radar. That's an amazing story. What was your experience like being in the jungle that many oh, times? It's it's like the first time you get flipped the keys to the Ferrari. Like I had driven <laughs> cars before, but never quite the Ferrari, anything this big, this fast. Sure, and sure. And it feels like it feels like a big show as you're doing it, as you're hosting it. It feels like, you know, if anything were to go wrong, it's going to take an awful lot of effort to steer this Titanic away from the iceberg. <laughs> like, that's how big it is. Yes. So, you know, it's it's the hardest prep you'll do for any show you're you're ever going to host. You know, you're going to try to map it all out and then live radio happens and everything changes anyways. And that's the beauty of it all. And you're either good at that or you're not. And it made me feel like, Hey, I, I might be good at this. And it, I, again, it was a, a, a certainly a, a fork in the road moment for my career. Well, I would argue the yes, Damon, you can host the Jim Rome show would have been, Hey, I might be good at this, <laughs> not just be there, but that might have been the moment but then, for but me. But then you got to do it, right? You got to do it. Yeah. There are a lot of people who have been asked to be a guest host and were not asked back after a day or a week doing it. So, you know, the fact that you get asked back means, all right, now you did it. Now you did it. So, no, um, no, yeah. No, yeah. No, you, handed a stage. It's another thing to actually perform on it. No doubt. You're absolutely right about that. And they tell you, I'll give you a little inside jungle. Nabel, Damon will know this. They tell you to do your show. They don't want you to do the Jim Rome show. They want you to do whatever your show is going to be. And I think that's pretty cool. And I think that one of the, the trip ups for the people who don't get asked back, Ryan, are they sit down in there and then they start doing like a poor man's Jim Rome impression. Yeah. Or all of yeah. a sudden, they're starting to talk like with some uh, st staccato in their voice and they're getting, they're, they're over enunciating <laughs> for some reason and they're saying clones and then they go, Arr. and now you're doing a bad Jim Rome impression, like a stand up comedian. And that's <laughs> when that show sucks. And then, and then you've got bad Jim Rome sound drops on top of it, you know, right there. So anyways, Damon and Rhino here getting you ready for the Kings and the Warriors. If the Warriors win tonight, Damon, give me one name that we have not talked about yet that we will be talking about hmm chris paul mm. chris paul chris paul can't be mr i never won shit and go home in a one and done game you know like he, he he's i think going to be asked to do more than he would be because of the gary payton injury and i think chris paul needs to have one of those i'm a first ballot hall of famer and even though it's the end of my career i can still reach out in my back pocket and pull out a basketball game chris paul has to have a really good game tonight and the warriors keep the turnovers low and instead of missing those three wide open threes tonight, Chris, they fell. That's, <laughs> that's how the Warriors win this game. I almost said Brandon Pajemski, but I'm going to yeah. put more responsibility on Chris Paul than a rookie. Well, the Kings have trouble sometimes with distributors. I will say this. Chris Paul is not going to do all the things uh, Gary Payton the second does. Uh, he is just the king of the hustle, the king of the 50-50, the king of the pressure. It's a right. pleasure watching him play. But I do want to talk a little bit more about the turnovers because I watched some film on the Warriors. Certainly, they turn it over a lot, but it's the reaction to the turnover. Sometimes they can be a little bit lazy getting back. Have you noticed that or is that something Steve Kerr has addressed? It's been a pox upon this house since Steve Kerr got the job. 
the, the, look, because they won championships, you officially don't get to complain about much. But we've complained about the, the the Warriors' ability to turn the ball over in all sorts of situations, and it's Steph Curry's fingerprints on this. It's Draymond Green's fingerprints on this. It's not just, hey, Jordan Poole was sloppy with the ball. Uh, the, remember, the big difference this year was supposed to be Poole out, CP3 in. That valuing of the basketball alone that will be felt in that transition, that transaction, is that's going to be six extra wins right there. Yep. That's going to be six extra wins right there. The Warriors actually finished with more turnovers per game this year than the Wizards did. Yeah, I heard and, you and say that. It's just sloppy. I don't get it. You got two future Hall of Fame point guards and you're playing like a couple guys at the Y yeah. running a fast break. I don't, I, it's, and I know that like, you know, ball movement predicates, you know, some mistakes sometimes. Like, I get it. I get it. But it it's nuts how sloppy that they can get. And like one turnover, it's rarely one bad turnover. It's a sequence of turnovers in a small handful of possessions, and it's Keystone Cops Benny Hill music. Yeah. And you're like, what the hell just happened? You know, every you got off to a real nice start against the Pelicans in a very big game, and in the second quarter alone, you had nine turnovers. What is that? See, Damon, I went back and watched some of the games, and I know it's hard. I, three of the games between the Kings and the Warriors this year decided by a point. I'm kind of throwing those out. Because they happened a million years ago, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And these versions of these two teams have not seen each other this season. This Agreed. is the first meeting. But um, it, the turnovers, a lot of times, they're not necessarily turnovers that are forced. They're more self-inflicted with the Warriors. But in big games like this, that's what worries me. Because sometimes I think that's where they flip the switch. And the Kings need every point they can get off of every single turnover tonight. Again, this is a team that's won it all, rising to the moment that the postseason feels like and presents and it's that experience that carries you past a team that again in its franchise's history argument could be made has never won a big game and protecting the ball and not letting you know uh, as we were saying Keon Ellis just go straight up swipe on you and gaffel everything and now yeah. sudden, you know he's got six steals tonight it's take care of the unforced errors it's don't be sloppy. Stop. St I, I say this. Think on him on YouTube because I never was able to say this on your radio. It, like if I were coaching the Golden State Warriors half the nights this year, I'd be walking into the locker room saying, guys, we got to quit stepping on our own dicks. We every hey. night we are our own worst enemies. If we would just cut down five turnovers a night. I know that sounds like a big number. It's, you know, it's, it's a big number, but sure. just look at three turnovers, just three fewer turnovers a night. We're going to win four or five more games this year in that one act alone. Like, let's do that. Let's really make that a priority. And it's odd how sloppy they get at the end of quarters, at the end of halves, at closing out on shooters on end of quarters and end of halves. It's weird. No team in basketball will play 10 really good minutes of basketball and then two minutes of what the hell was that basketball quite like the Golden State Warriors. See, Damon, this is where I want to debate you because it's like if you watched a Sacramento Kings game this season, especially towards the end of the season, and uh, this is where I'm at. Other than you guys have Steph Curry and we do not, I have no idea which way to go on this one. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, oh, it's a full layoff. I'm I'm very confident that both of these teams can blow this game tonight. <laughs> yeah, uh, see? But I don't know who's going to win it, but I know who can blow it, and it's both rosters. They no are well doubt. equipped to blow this game. There is no doubt about that. You know who will not blow it? That is Bennett's Westside Grill in Rockland, located in the Blue Oaks Town Center. You guys know it's brunch season. Get to Bennett's. Get your patio reservations. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. You can check out the menus, the specials. You can also make reservations, get gift cards, and scope out the other locations. You know we love our Bennett's here on the channel. Go give them some love and make sure, too, you check out their happy hour. They've got 60 different wines by the glass, and they've got Ron Bauer Shard. 
enough said. That's pretty damn good. It, right? Hey, Ron Bauer shard. You don't see an awful lot of Ron Bauer by the glass no. anywhere. So that's very nice. Uh, let's say I'm walking in tomorrow to get myself a little brunch action. What am I getting? What's the what's the go to what's the go to item at brunch? Oh man, great question, Damon. I go with the classic breakfast there. I, I just have to. They we go for a classic breakfast and then they've got an amazing French toast. So we get kind of the sweet and the savory and Way to just go. mix it up. You, you know, it's it's gotta be family style at brunch. Hey, any place that's touting its brunch better be good at the basics. Just you know, two eggs the right way, bacon sausage, little uh, yeah, muffin right. biscuit action. It's like a it's like an Italian restaurant. Any Italian restaurant should be measured on one dish only. Spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, interesting. I thought you were going to go lasagna, but spaghetti no, and, and meatballs. No, I'm not saying that that's the only thing you're allowed to get, but every Italian There's restaurant. No measuring stick, right? No Italian restaurant can be better than whatever its score of spaghetti and meatballs is. It's a good point. It's a damn good point. And by the way, it's an two- indicator. It's an indicator of who's going to win tonight in this restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the only indicator we have of anything. Uh, really quick, tell everybody what you're doing after the game tonight, win um, or lose. Uh, boy, I hope I can fix this buzz in the damn channel uh, before I hop on with Larry Kruger, and we're going to be doing some Warriors perspective post game, and it's going to be with uh, the, the the same group of uh, guys that Larry has on with him in the past, and I'm looking forward to all of us getting together and talking a little basketball tonight, win, lose, or draw. It should be a good show. Um, it it dude, it's totally a pleasure to, to be with you. Thanks so much yeah, for having me great. on. I'm glad that we stream this on both of our channels. It was an awful lot of fun. You know your ball, and um, it was a pleasure. Please give my best to to Grant and uh, you know. Good luck, everyone tonight. This is going to be a fun one. You know, the biggest problem with the NBA is that a lot of its games don't come with consequence, and the NBA knew that, and it's manufactured the consequence of you know, the in-season tournament. And now this, which definitely was manufactured to raise a level of consequence at the end of the basketball year. And I got to give Adam it Silver worked. an awful lot of credit. This worked. You know, his his designs on the All-Star game ever being competitive again, I don't know if that's going to work. But this play-in tournament has absolutely worked. And it's been really interesting. Um, so good job, NBA. Good job, Adam Silver. How long, how often do we compliment a commissioner for getting something uh, right in sports these days? it's a tough job. It's a tough job. There's no doubt about that. Hey, I'm not going to let you get out of here without giving him a prediction. Who's it going to be? Warriors, Warriors win this game. Kings. Warriors, Warriors win, win this, this game. game. They, All right. they they win this game. I think they just, they have to. Had it been another team, I don't know. It's, it's Warriors, Pelicans, Warriors, Lakers. They're okay, but it's just the fucking Kings. That's it. <laughs> it's not just the Kings. We have a beam. Come on, Damon. Sorry, Sorry man. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, I... I've gone both ways, Damon, and my heart tells me it's going to be the Warriors, but I look at King Street coming into this. I just feel like there's this undercover confidence in this building, and I feel like you might see a different De'Aaron Fox. Now, you brought up Draymond. You could get under De'Aaron Fox's skin, too. You could get him out of the game as well. He's had some issues kind of controlling his outbursts, or you could at least get him checked out for a possession or two. So I worry about that. I think the Kings are going to find a way to pull this one off tonight. I Even really with Harrison do. Barnes giving you his annual postseason two for 13 from the floor? You know, I think we're going to see some, get this, I think we're going to see a little bit of high-low action between the forwards tonight. And I think they're going to throw a different look at the Warriors in this. Usually the Kings set up their offense from certain predictable spots with Demonis Sabonis. I think they're going to get him a little bit more in motion tonight, get him catching the ball coming off of curls and getting him into different spots where that space can't be created by the defender and dragging off of him. But that's just my guess. We'll see. My my key is points in transition and points off turnovers. That That's what it's got to be. I was uh, asked to come on uh, VEASAN. You know, the Vegas Jesus, Insider yeah. Sports Network, I was I, I was asked to come on, and unfortunately, they asked me to come on in a time slot where I'm running to get the kids and pick up wife from BART, so I, I couldn't join them. And so the host of the show, Tim Murray, then was like, hey, Damon, give me some insider dope on, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen tonight? And I wrote him back, you know, in a short amount of time, everything that we just talked about over the last 49 minutes together, where I basically said, Whatever you think you're going to expect out of the Golden State Warriors or Sacramento Kings, you're probably not going to get it, 
and that includes like low expectations. When you think both these teams suck, they actually look really good too. So here you go. Here's the one thing. The team that hits the most threes tonight wins. There you go. That, that, that's it. At, at the end of this game, I will be stunned if the team that hit the most threes isn't also playing on what Thursday night against whoever wins Lakers Pelicans. It's a, it's a strong take and it is a very smart take. Damon, thank you so much for making the time for us. And uh, either way, thank you for all the coverage this season and uh, coming in with us a couple times. Really appreciate it. Can we do more next year? I would love to. Uh, your um, football coverage is amazing. Re um, do the draft coverage one more time. Remind people, because we have a ton of Niners fans that watch this show in Sacramento. Hey, it's it's the NFL draft. We're going to be all over it. That's how that works. Yeah, you <laughs> and Larry are all over it. Thank you. Yeah, he and I are doing uh, Wake Ups, uh, a show that we've kind of crafted starting at 8.45 on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we're really excited about uh, tomorrow is a Wednesday. We'll be at it in the morning. Uh, we are going to be at it again next Wednesday as well, obviously, with that being the day before the draft. Monday show's not happening because I'm going to be flying back from Vegas. I'm ah. going to the Fear Going to see nice. a couple of concerts. The Sphere. I'm a, I'm a fish guy, so I'm going to go to. I'm dragging my wife to more fish concerts. She How loves did you that. Score those tickets. I heard those aren't the easiest to get. Oh, dude, I don't even want to tell you. Like oh, one of the kids God. might not be going to college, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the shows. But they, um, they have both kidneys still, right? We're good. I didn't say that. You oh. said that. Yeah, that's true. I did say that. Wasn't Rhino. supposed to bring that up. Thank you for having me on, brother. Of it was course. a real pleasure. And uh, hey, look, good luck. It's going to be a fun one tonight. We want. Real consequences, not manufactured. We got that tonight, and that's all you can ask for in sports. Amen. Hoping for a great game. Damon, you're a great guy. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Back at you. Tell, tell Napier to quit dodging me. I will. He, what's his problem these days? <laughs> I, I'll let him know. I got him. Damon, thank you so much. That was a ton of fun. Damon Bruce, my goodness. Awesome to have the pluses. Did I say that right, pluses? The Plus is in the house with us. This was a really fun show. We will be back at 6.30. We're going to break down. It's a little bit more Sacramento-centric as our normal pregame show on If You Don't Like That. But what a treat. Fun conversation. Enjoy tonight's game. It's going to be a fun one. Um, look, as Damon laid out, it couldn't ask for anything more. Certainly you wished your teams were in better positions, but now tonight they're in better positions than the ones that aren't playing. So have a great night, have a safe night, and we will talk to you at 630. Thank you so much for your time and have a great